Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sped Homeschool Conversations. We are so happy that you're with us tonight, if you're joining us live, or even if you're on our recorded broadcast, uh, we just welcome you to this um, session. We, um, our Sped Homeschool is a nonprofit, and our goal is to empower parents to be able to help their children to be successful in whatever method that you homeschool, or maybe you don't even homeschool, and you're listening to this broadcast because this um, topic that we're talking tonight is pertaining to something that you deal with. And our, our conversations this month, um, as we do a monthly theme, is on food. And food is something we always deal with at the holidays, but maybe with children with specific needs, we deal with a lot of other things on top of it. And so, um, so we just want to thank Angela Fuller for joining us tonight. Um, thanks for being our guest and yes, for hello. this conversation. It, um, I'm excited because we're going to talk about food allergies and we're going to be talking about the holidays. So pan planning, packing, and traveling, which, um, <laughs> You know, sometimes we just want to hold ourselves up in the house when we're we're dealing with lots of things with our kids, but um, but we can't do that. <laughs> so we're hoping that um, our conversation tonight will help help you to take that those steps to get more out of the house and um, to take your kids and experience all the world has. So mm -hmm. uh, so thank you, and uh, we also want to thank a reason for for sponsoring this broadcast, and we'll hear from them halfway through, and um, some of the curriculum that they have, and so um, so let's dive into this this subject. And um, first of all, I want our audience to get to know you, Angela. Um, I'm excited for that because you have, well, as we were talking about even before the broadcast starts, when you you start an organization. Um, it's because of a passion and, um, both of our passions tend to come from our children, which mm -hmm. too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so can you tell us a little bit of that story and about your organization as well? Sure. Um, so I have an 11 year old son and then a four, almost five year old as well. And it was when my first son was initially showing symptoms of food allergy, which was about two and a half months. And it was through what I was eating because he was exclusively breastfed. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a lot of back and forth to the pediatrician's office. And then eventually right. we were sent to a board certified allergist and um, it was about three and a half years into our journey with him that I started realizing that um, I not only did I need a village, <laughs> um, exactly. but I felt like I had information and things to share with others. And mm -hmm. so it really mm -hmm. became my passion at that point to start to educate myself even more than I was. And I started attending national conferences. And then I started our food allergy nonprofit in August of 2012. Um, and that was specifically because of my journey um, for those first three and a half years with my son um, and just feeling like our community needed to come together um, right. and that I hoped to encourage others that they right. could do this, <laughs> even right. though it can be a little daunting at first, that it's possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when we were blessed with our second son, who's almost five, he also has food allergies. And so it was a much easier transition because I'd kind of been there and done that. Um, mm -hmm. And so we just continued our journey. Um, and then two and a half years ago, I actually developed a life-threatening allergy to dairy. And so I even can't touch it now. Mm -hmm. um, I will break out into hives um, and surely cannot ingest it. So um, it has come to a very personal level with me in many ways. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so your organization is Food Allergy Families of the Triad. Yes. And, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to bring up your website here. Yes. Um, so we're located in the triad region of North Carolina, which is the Winston-Salem, High Point, and Greensboro area. And um, we service at least five surrounding counties. We have members that come in for meetings or who connect on a closed Facebook group. And I provide resources in just about any way that anyone would need. I've walked people through the grocery store late in the evening when they got off work just to help them navigate and read labels or find safe foods. Um, I help people with recipes all the time um, to adapt them because I love to cook and bake. And so I'm very comfortable oh, that's awesome. with that. 
it's a good fit for you then. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also help people advocate for their children, whether it's in the school system or whether it's in the public sector, um, to make sure that they are aware of their civil rights and they know how um, to navigate those waters. Um, or if it's navigating holidays with family that might not have a clear understanding of what food allergies are or what accommodations right. are necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had that discussion in a couple interviews ago um, about just how do you have those discussions with families? Mm -hmm. So if you want, want to review that, you can go back a couple episodes and mm -hmm. check that up because that's that's a whole nother thing i mean that's getting over that hurdle of um this is necessary it's not yes. just an option or we're choosing this diet right. um because there's i think fad diets have kind of given a bad name to allergies or even mm -hmm. intolerances and um i wanted to start out our conversation talking about the difference yes what is the difference between an allergy and an, an intolerance so the biggest difference is that an allergy involves an immune response. And so with an allergy, um, the body is going to launch an attack because of whatever they have been exposed to. And that can go as far as anaphylaxis, which is life-threatening. And the only way to treat anaphylaxis is with epinephrine. Mm -hmm. So very different than an intolerance, which could have very uncomfortable symptoms, um, like a lactose intolerance. You could have gas or swelling of the abdomen, um, but it's not going to be potentially life-threatening. Um, the only difference would be a gluten and like a gluten intolerance or celiac that can have long-term impact that will be very detrimental to your health. Um, but again, you wouldn't get a light, an immediate life-threatening right. situation with an accidental exposure. So an intolerance, you would have a very different treatment plan for an accidental exposure than you would an allergy. Accidental exposure with an actual food allergy, um, most likely you're gonna be advised by a board certified allergist to administer epinephrine. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have a question for you based on um, okay. talking about your, um, your advocating. Um, Chris, wants, Chris wants to know, did you take classes for advocating? If so which ones, or was it on the job training? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I have led talks on advocating for children with food allergies, um, I will bring in experts. I've had attorneys come and sit on a panel. I sit and speak as a mother, having experience advocating for my own children. Um, I also at national conferences, I've had the privilege of hearing attorneys speak who specialize in ADA. And so I feel very comfortable that I have a clear understanding of um, all of the different parts of ADA, whether it's Section 504, which would apply to the school system if they receive federal funding, or like Title um, II or three that would be more in the public sector. Mm -hmm. um, so some of it was learn as I go. And then from there, start reaching out to find answers to questions that I didn't know the answers to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, and I wanted to bring up the picture of your, you and your kids with mm -hmm. your table. So, um, seeing yes. that they, um, they go travel with you. I'm going to see if I can make that bigger. Yes, yeah, so that was one of our community events. We try to do at least three community events a year where we um, we partner with different organizations. We have a local children's museum that has been a great partner oh. with us and that reaches school age children, which is very important, especially young children when they're starting kindergarten. A lot of times that's very concerning time for parents um, with children with food allergies. And so we distribute information to help them get started and then let them know how to connect with other families who can also help them navigate who have been in the same school system or even had the same teachers. That's always really helpful. Um, and that was a couple of years ago. So my kids are a little bit bigger now, but my oldest son who's 11 now, he's fantastic at the table. He's been working a table since he was very little. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, my daughter travels with me sometimes to conferences and she covers the table and doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah. People always comment on how fantastic he is at the table. And um, part of it is because since he's homeschooled, he's always been able to accompany me. He's been to business meetings since he was four years old. He goes to the meetings with me. He helps run the meetings. And so he has very, very, um, uh, he's just fantastic experience um, from, from being little. Yeah. Well, Christopher says thank you. Um, <laughs> and, and I just want to, you know, comment too. That, that is, that's such an important thing is teaching your child how to advocate for themselves. Yes. And, yes. Um, I just um, wanted to point that out because that was in my thought pattern as you were talking about that is that mm -hmm. you know, too often and because we're with our kids all the time, I think more so when kids are in the public school setting or they're sent you know, to a private school, we teach them to advocate earlier. But if they're with mm -hmm. us, we don't even think about it sometimes um, as homeschool parents. And so that's some, definitely something to be aware of. Is yes. Train your children how to answer for themselves. Right, yes, absolutely. Or even large family events, oftentimes, you know, mm -hmm. you're the mm -hmm. adult is the parents. You want to be visiting with people as well. And it's nice to know that your kids will know how to ask somebody if their hands are clean or say no thank you politely if they're offered food by somebody um, that they're not allowed to take food from. And um, yes, so teaching children how to appropriately advocate for themselves from a very young age. I did the role playing and so we role played a ton when they're little oh, and then yeah. and that way they get to practice at home and I can kind of fine tune um, what might be the most appropriate way to answer something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, and that, that makes, you know, a good point is that, you know, planning out for traveling yes. is involves not only just how do you pack your bag, right. but mm -hmm. things like those interactions and right. a lot more. Do you have anything else that you kind of want to share on, on those lines about what we should be thinking about with food allergies and, and planning um, well, like for the holidays or for um, taking trips. Right. So it's kind of interesting. Before I had children, I would, my biggest concern was, did I have shoes to match whatever outfit I wanted to wear while I was on a trip? And, and now I could care less what clothes end up in our bags as long as I have the food that I need. And so um, yeah. um, the first question is always, how long am I going to be away from a kitchen? And so oh, for yeah. us, mm -hmm. we personally don't eat out at restaurants. Um, a lot of families can and do, they feel comfortable doing that. And so for those families, they would need to scout out restaurants ahead of time, wherever they're going to be, yeah. call ahead, speak to a manager, get the manager's name, um, and then find out what types of meals they could safely prepare in that restaurant. Right. For us, we travel with all of our food. And mm -hmm. so that typically takes me about two weeks to prep um, because I just have to special order certain things that I might be out of that I can't find locally. So if I can, if I have the warning, then I will start planning out food two weeks in advance. Um, and I have a list of my non-perishables. I have a list of my perishables that are packed in my cooler. There's a list of the foods that I prepare in advance so that I can warm them up quickly in a microwave in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. um, and then things that I can cook in my special little pot um, in an actual microwave in a hotel room. Um, wow. uh -huh. And then I scout out what grocery stores are in the areas where we're going to be staying. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then that way I don't have to bring everything. I can bring however much I need until I get to that stop. And then I know what grocery stores, I'll call the grocery stores ahead of time and verify that they keep a food that I need. And then I have a list of what foods I can buy at what stores while we're on the road. Mm. Um, and then that way I can restock. So yeah. the ultimate test was last spring when we decided with one week's notice to drive all the way across country and back with both of our boys. Um, oh, and so that was a true test of my packing and planning skills. Uh -huh. <laughs> we survived and I actually would do it again. So it was successful, Very I good. think. So mm -hmm. did you learn anything new on that trip? <laughs> um, I did. I learned how to pack the cooler more efficiently. 
So I learned, so I was always pretty good about packing our snacks in the back of the car. I would know like I, we packed so many snacks were perishable and not perishable and how long it would last the kids in the car. But right. I had never done more than three days in the car with them. And of course that whole trip took almost 17 days. Um, and sometimes we were driving for over 24 hours overnight. Mm -hmm. And so I learned to pack the cooler more efficiently. The things that were on the bottom were the things I wasn't going to take out until we got to our next hotel. And then the things on top were my quick grabs when we would stop to mm -hmm. gas up. So I wasn't digging through the cooler in the back of the car. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have you ever flown? Um, we did a couple of times when my son was young. Mm -hmm. That was before when my oldest was young. And that was before he started having airborne reactions. Um, his allergies have unfortunately become more severe. So his um, his threshold for a reaction has actually gotten lower as he's gotten older. For the majority of children, it does get um, better. Like their, their allergies can, in some cases, become less severe over time. But for him, they've actually worsened. And so after several airborne reactions that required epinephrine and then very exciting trips in the ambulance with the lights going flying down the freeway, which he thought was super fun. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, luckily, he was relaxed and that was good. Um, but after some of those experiences, we've been advised not to fly. And so when right. we decided last spring we wanted to visit friends and family in California, the only way was by car. So right. I had seven days to figure it out. And I love right. a challenge. And so I was totally up for it. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I um, I, I think I heard somewhere, you know, as the holidays were approaching, that TSA released their approved foods to travel list. And then right. you could actually bring an entire cooked turkey. <laughs> That's and I was like, you've got to be kidding. I mean, I've traveled with a whole round of cheese before because I make <laughs> cheese. Right, and I brought right, it right. Roses, and of course, I got stopped by security because they're like, what is that? Right. <laughs> so I'm like, well, you want to sample it? I can cut a piece off for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah yes. So with, with traveling, you can actually bring on more food if you have a medical need. And so oftentimes it's best to call TSA and just check and make sure you have whatever documentation you need. For us, when our son was younger and we flew with him, I did bring food that normally would not be allowed on. And I just had a letter from our physician saying that it was medically necessary for me to carry that food for him because he couldn't eat anything in the airport. So if we were delayed at all, I needed to be able to feed him because he was about two and a half or three at the time. And so that is possible. It's just best to call ahead and make 100% sure that they're not going to give you a hard time as right. you go through. That's the last thing you want to be detained mm -hmm. in PSA and then have things confiscated that you spent so much time sourcing right. and packing and, and all right. that. So. And a lot of people are concerned about bringing epinephrine on. I'm going through security, but I've never had anybody give me a hard time about it. Um, I always have our emergency action plan filled out. And that's for myself now when I fly, because I do fly for um, some of my other jobs. And so I have my emergency medical plan that lists my allergy and then why I carry epinephrine. And so I just present that to TSA and they've never given me a hard time about it. And Is there a way a place to get like a, a standard form that you can get? get there are yeah, there are a couple that are available online. You can download them for free. Um, okay. uh, foodallergy.org, if you go to their website and search for an emergency action plan, then you can download it in English or in Spanish. They have it available in both. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so you can print that out. I keep mine in like a plastic sleeve so that it doesn't get as torn up um, in my bag. And then I keep it right with my epinephrine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then luckily, some of the airlines are now carrying AviQ, which is super exciting. American Airlines, it was just released last week, is actually stocking AviQ, which is an auto injector, an epinephrine auto injector. And um, they're actually stocking it in their medical kits on their airplanes now. And I think Alaskan and maybe Hawaiian Airlines have as well. And so we're hoping that 
that kind of pushes some of the other airlines to start carrying it as well, which would be great protection um, mm -hmm. for people who don't have a diagnosed allergy, but then for whatever reason, react for the first time when they're on a plane, which can happen at any age. Um, and so those people would be protected. Sorry. Yeah, I never even thought about, you know, not having been exposed to certain things, but when you put yourself out in public and you travel, you are mm -hmm. exposed to a lot of things that you normally don't have in your normal environment. Sure. Absolutely. And that can cause reactions that mm -hmm. you've never experienced before. Right. But, um, definitely something that we can. Yeah, yeah, allergies can develop at any age. So it's not uncommon. It's actually becoming more common for adults to develop allergies later in life. And mm -hmm. so you could eat shellfish every day of your life for 50 years. And then the next time you eat it, you could have an anaphylactic reaction. Wow. So, yeah. And so there are a, there's a large number of us that are pushing to have epinephrine stocked anywhere. Um, there are defibrillators stocked, like in airports. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we feel like it's just as necessary um, to have Epi stocked there as well. And um, in North Carolina, I helped with the laws that required epinephrine to be stocked in our school system. And then we have a voluntary law on the books now that allows child focused or restaurants to stock epinephrine. And then they're covered by the Good Samaritan law if they do administer it. So there's no liability for them. Right. Um, and so they just have access to it. That's our big thing is we want everyone to have access to epinephrine. Great, yeah. And it's not hard to give an epi shot. I had to do it to my cow of all things. Oh my <laughs> yes, my cow went into, um, yeah, had hives and crazy stuff. Whoa. I don't know what she ate, but, um, but yeah. Supposedly every dairy carries one too. So if you have to get to the point, you wouldn't take the full dose, but. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they do yeah, because, it is yeah. not hard to administer the auto injectors make it very very easy and obiq even talks you through it um, mm -hmm. there's an automated voice that talks you through um how to administer it so wow mm -hmm. yeah cool. so i just want our audience to know if you are watching and you have a question or you have a food allergy and you're like okay how do we handle this if we're going here for christmas <laughs> Um, definitely throw that question up for us so we can we can chat about it because we'd love to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, in, I even scout out grocery stores. And I don't have food allergies because when I travel, I can't. I eat all organic, and it mm -hmm. messes with my system when I travel, and I can't eat all those chemicals. And mm -hmm. so, but grocery stores are so different, and and so I never even thought of you know calling a manager and saying, okay, do you have this brand that I eat or this brand? And, um, that's some good. Yeah, I do pack a lot of my food though because I do have a free bag on American Airlines, so right. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so yeah, another suggestion: if you're traveling and you are flying, if you get whatever their their you know usually it's their the airline's credit card, you get a free bag. So it's a good way. You don't even have to use the card. I think we we used mm -hmm. it to pay for my son's college tuition and paid it off. And then we had hit our points and we went, oh, good. Let's just put right. it in the door. Right, <laughs> I, right. I get a free bag every time I travel because I have a card. So that would be helpful. It's kind of a mm -hmm. no brainer um, because otherwise it's you pay for the baggage fee there and the baggage yes. fee back and that gets to be expensive. So mm -hmm. uh, yep. money saving tip for you. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. And with the grocery stores, I've even helped, like we had Thanksgiving at my aunt's house for the first time ever. And because I've always just, we've had to eat at home. It's the only way that it felt safe. And she offered to host Thanksgiving this year and was um, open to accommodating the kids' allergies, even though I don't allow my children to eat food that other people have prepared. Um, mm -hmm. I we, so the, the environment still had to be safe in order for them to be there because if food was being cooked, then the proteins could be aerosolized. And then if it was on people's hands, then it would be cross-contaminated around the house. And um, especially with a four-year-old that I can only keep under wraps so much. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, normal four year olds are picking cookies off the, you know, the platters and, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, rolling on the floor, licking the floor. Yeah, you oh, just exactly. never know what the four year old yeah. was. Um, and so for that, 
she came up, well, she called first and we went over the allergies again for the kids. And then she, I told her to come up with a list of what she wanted to make. I was like, you do your wish list without necessarily thinking about the allergies. Right. And then any recipe that contained an allergen, she would text me. And then I would text her what was the substitute. So if it called for cream cheese, I would go in my refrigerator and take a picture of the cream cheese. And then I would tell her what grocery store was found out to make it easier on her. Right. Um, and then for family who was traveling from out of town, who was coming in, I just, I knew their address. So I called the manufacturer and then gave them my other aunt's address. And then they were able to tell me the nearest grocery store to where she was to help her find the items. Oh, yeah. um, so if they were willing, to accommodate that I just wanted to make it as easy and as streamlined for them. Um, it was pretty funny because there were a few things that they thought like they could just run out to the store and buy. And I just oh, laughed, no. like, not in my world. Um, uh -huh. we'll my special order like a week in advance directly from the manufacturer. Um, right. So it was, it was fun. Like it, it was like, I think it might have been a little bit frustrating, but it was kind of to be kind of funny at the end that um, they started to realize how hard it was to find the things, but on the flip side, how doable it was. It's possible mm -hmm. to do it. We had a fantastic, massive family dinner and nobody starved and nobody complained. Everybody enjoyed the food and right. we were able to focus on what we were there for, which was to spend time together and yeah. not have to worry about the safety of the kids. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, that's how we did Christmas last year. I was we were talking about this before the broadcast started. And we've got so many food allergies in our family, and mm -hmm. you know, went to the grocery store and went through every you know every packaging, yes. every list because they were all from out of town. And and you know, right. kind of said that this is a grocery store I normally go to, but of course I don't have those allergies in my house. Right. So you know, kind of guided them through there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Did good. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, and they don't put all the information on the labels of food. Um, they're only required by law to label what's in the ingredients. So if people's allergies or even if their intolerances are so severe that they can't do food that is made on shared equipment or in the same facility as something that they're avoiding, then you must call the manufacturer because that is not required. That's a voluntary statement um, that is not required or regulated in any way by the FDA. And we had talked about this earlier too, is even packaging includes yes. a lot of mm -hmm. allergens and so right. aware of the packaging even. And so that's why you look for a specific brand Yes, because mm -hmm. you know that brand has right. this packaging and it's not because, oh, we're just picky eaters. No. Oh. <laughs> no, it's usually at least three times as much as an alternative. And so, no, we would choose the cheaper option if we could, but rarely mm -hmm. can we. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. Um, so, what kind of things do you pack? I mean, that would be, you know, a question of what is packable. Right. So, <laughs> um, so the allergies that we manage in our house are milk, egg, peanut, tree nuts, hemp, mustard seed, all gluten containing grains, fish, and shellfish, and then we avoid corn for the most part as well. Um, and so, when we travel, um, the non-perishables would be things like wild butter because we can do soy and that is a soy based um, peanut butter alternative and then sun butter which is my personal i prefer that one and so that's the one that i eat the most and that's just made from sunflower seeds and mm -hmm. so we pack those so the, kind of like your traditional pb and j we can take that on the road with us right. and we have a bread um there's only one bread that exists on the market um, that we can safely eat but um, I make sure I stock that and then I know grocery stores along the way are co-op. I try to find co-ops in towns are always fun to explore and I like to support local co-ops. And so I'll usually do my research on that. Um, so yeah, so we'll pack bread and then sliced turkey. Um, my little one eats hot dogs and so, and we keep those in the cooler. And um, I know Target carries the sliced meat that we use, and then they also carry the hot dogs that we use, which is Applegate Farms. Um, and a lot of their products. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's very specific that one brand. Um, and then, as far as other non-perishables, Enjoy Life is a company that makes all top eight allergen-free products, and so we rely on a lot of their snacks. They make like individual bags of chips or cookies. 
um, that'll keep the kids occupied and happy on a long road trip. Um, yeah, and then fresh fruit is easy for me to buy on the road and I carry a paring knife with me and so I can always cut up fresh fruit. <laughs> yeah, normally we travel with our travel trailer and we did take a trip at one point without it. And I went, oh, I bought something that I need a knife for. Right, <laughs> right. Paring knives. And I think one of my paring knives stayed in my truck for a year. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, that's where that is. Yep. But, yeah. Yep. So my packing list will have supplies, which will be things like paper towels and paper plates and um, disposable silverware, which I do try to wash as much as I can, but it, I know I can throw it away if I'm in a hurry in a hotel room. Right. Um, and then my paring knife, I always bring um, Ziploc bags in every size under the sun, rubber bands Ooh. to reclose containers. Um, cause I try to avoid Tupperware containers on the road. They take up too much space. And so we put everything in Ziploc bags. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I try to, I, at home, I don't like to use plastic, but on the road, it's really essential. Yeah. yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. yeah. And then we have a special <laughs> pot that I use that can specifically be used in a microwave. And then it has the lid to it is actually a strainer. And so I can cook mm -hmm. pasta in it, rice. Um, I've cooked oatmeal in it. Um, in the hotel rooms. Um, and then my food list, I separate by perishable and non-perishable. Um, mm. So we bring pasta, gluten-free pasta on the road. We bring allergen-free mac and cheese. Um, mm. That is something that only started in existence a couple of years ago. And it has been fantastic wow. to have traveling because <laughs> I can cook it pretty easily in a microwave. So but sweet potatoes, I cook those in the microwave on the road and oh, they're really easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. just puncture them and throw them in. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but my pre-cooked food, I have a long list of that as well. So I always pre-cook pasta, rice, quinoa, um, because then, and then I saute vegetables or steam vegetables. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. if we're traveling in different hotel rooms, because we're just on the road for several days, each night I can kind of throw together a different combination. So I can do quinoa with one vegetable one night and then pasta with another vegetable the next night. So we mm -hmm. don't feel like we eat the exact same thing every day. Um, exactly. Yeah. 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 I've made burgers ahead of time uh, that I knew was like just enough to last us two to three days, which would be safe to travel with. Mm. Um, black bean burgers. Um, yeah, we eat fairly well on the road. Yeah. I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I, you think, you know, with that many food allergies, your diet has to be pretty limited. But if you start looking outside of, you know, the, the staples and the norms that usually, you know, are those allergies. There, there's a wide variety of foods that we often don't even explore as a society right. <laughs> that are are usable and accessible and, and right. Um, with my children, they really don't feel like they're missing out on anything. Mm -hmm. They are homeschooled as well, and so they don't hear from others or what they're doing or eating or how they live. So. They're aware that we live differently in a lot of ways. Homeschooling alone is not the most common way to educate. And so we're a little bit different there. And then we have the food allergies. And then medically, we kind of approach our bodies in a different way as well. So that's a little bit different. But they, they're they not growing up feeling like they're missing out on anything. We bake. We, right. like we have cakes. We made sugar cookies the other day that we're decorating for Christmas and um, so we, we live a full life. It's just a little different than everybody else. Right. You just use different products. <laughs> We're having a great conversation and we definitely want to include anything that you have to bring to it. If you're watching and say, I have a question. We're dealing with this. Um, we want you to bring that, but we're going to hear from our sponsor and I'm going to give Angela a little break and um, then we're going to bring her back and we're going to have, finish up this hour of talking about just packing, planning, traveling, and food allergies and how does that work. And so um, it's been a great first half an hour and I'm looking forward to the second half. And so um, we'll come back and then she has some pictures to share with us too of her travels. So, um, so hang on everybody. <laughs> So we are going to um, hear from A Reason For. They have been sponsoring our broadcast for um, all of um, 
I did it again. Okay, there we go. Um, for all of last month and this month. And, and we just thank them for that um, and their support of this broadcast. Um, but a reason for handwriting is what we're going to talk about tonight. And they even gave us a Christmas picture. If you see the, the coloring page that's in, um, with the, their handwriting program. So they do have seasonal things too. Um, but a reason for handwriting, um, a parents know that screens, electronic devices are everywhere. Even so, writing legibly and reading other people's handwriting is a very crucial life skill. One of the that a reason for handwriting can help your child master. The program provides um, instruction in correct letter formation and consistent daily practice to help children learn to write fluently. Um, their exclusive order sheets are suitable for display, just like this one with a Christmas tree on it at home or for giving to others. And so it encourages kids to use their best penmanship, of course, if it's gonna be displayed or given away. Um, most importantly, the weekly scripture verse in every lesson equips them with essential knowledge of God's word and helps them build a lifelong biblical worldview. Um, definitely visit uh, a reason for Let's see if I can pull up there. There we go. Um, visit at reason4.com to download sample lessons and to learn more. So um, definitely check out their website. They do have some free stuff you can try out, see if it works, and see if your kids like it. So um, I know a lot of people that have kids that struggle love this curriculum. So um, so definitely give it a try. But thank you, Reason4, for, for sponsoring this broadcast and, um, and for just... Um, your support for Sped Homeschool. We appreciate your support for a nonprofit. So I'm going to bring Angela back, and we're going to continue this conversation about um, food allergies, travel, um, and and just everything that packing, planning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that goes with that. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of glad I'm not going anywhere for the holiday season this year. At least with my kids, I'm, my husband and I have our 25th wedding anniversary. That's a whole different thing to plan. Oh, how fun! We're going in, out of the country, and so yeah, I'm planning food too. Right, right. <laughs> like, what do we tell them, the people that we're renting the house, what we want the the fridge stocked with, and what can they even buy on that island? So <laughs> right, <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, Traveling yeah. overseas is a whole another animal. Mm -hmm. I know, I knew, I know food allergy families who have done it successfully. Um, it's not something that we have ever um, ventured into yet. I would love to do it one day. I would love to take my kids overseas um, if my son can ever fly safely as he gets older, potentially, or right. if new laws are passed to make airlines safer for people with food allergies. But, um, but yeah, I know a lot of families, I mean, they've taken seven to 10 day cruises and it just took a lot of planning in advance, but they made it work. Wow. So... That's Oftentimes great. I think people don't even want or don't even think that it's an option. And so they don't call and ask the questions. And I've always Very taken point. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. always taken the approach. I'm call and ask. And if they say no, they say no, and then I'll figure something else out. But um doesn't I was surprised we, we partner with um uh an organization that has private museums. Mm -hmm. And when we put together uh, a user guide for special needs families to put on their website, mm -hmm. he goes, yes, you can ask for this and this, and you can ask them to, you know, if your kids can't uh, get into the museum because with them, out them being publicly owned, they don't have to be completely accessible. Right. But he said, well, but if they want to see the displays, they can ask us to bring them into the lobby where they can sit or to a third-party uh -huh. location. I'm like, you can ask for that? He's like, uh -huh. oh, yeah. we'll, mm -hmm. take, we'll take all of the, the stuff out of the display and bring it to you. And I thought, right, right. We ask more. Um, and I think right. that that's a really good point is we need to be asking more so that our kids do get the opportunities to do things that they yep. can do. Right, right. And I think oftentimes people are uncomfortable asking family members to make accommodations either for themselves personally or their, their children. And I understand that can get a little uncomfortable at the beginning, but um, as long as you are understanding that it's going to be hard for the other person, and I always try to put myself in their shoes, and mm -hmm. I verbalize that when I'm talking to them and say, like, I just want to say from the get-go that this is going to be really different for you, um, and I just need you to you know, be really open-minded about this and be open to things maybe tasting a little bit differently, right. um, you know, and just kind of give them a heads up that that you have an understanding that this is going to be different for them. Mm -hmm. I think that already sets a good tone for the conversation. 
Um, and then specifically in the incident in the situation with my aunt recently, like I, and I genuinely felt this way that I said it over and over and over again, how much I appreciated it. Um, it she was willing and mm. certainly able because she's a fantastic cook. Um, but so she, but she was very willing from the beginning to accommodate everything that we needed. Um, but I just reiterated constantly the impact on us that it would allow my kids to have that experience of being around a big family and hanging out with their cousins. It's mm. the way I grew up. And until this year, my kids have just never had that experience um, because in years past, you know, there just wasn't that understanding that there is now. And um, mm -hmm. I always try to educate and I firmly believe that education can solve just about every problem. And um, mm -hmm. I go into every situation with the assumption of, I'm just going to educate, and in the end, we're all going to come around and have some type of a um, an even ground, at least, even if we don't necessarily agree 100% on the situation. Mm -hmm. um, my answer always is education first, and in particular with food allergy, I think that that is often the case. Um, when families push back, it's because they don't understand. So yeah, well, and I think. Yeah, there, and we talked about this in our, our broadcast a couple weeks ago too. Is is that um, there's so many people that do diets for other reasons. Yes, and mm -hmm. then, then it gives those that have diets that are specifically for medical reasons, and right. you know, and these allergies that are life and death threatening situations. I mean, mm -hmm. you have a story you, you shared with me before we started about somebody you know just passing away recently. Right. Um, that they're they're put on that same level where right. they shouldn't be right right um i feel like milk the milk allergy is one of the most difficult to advocate for my children or even for myself if i say that my children and i have a milk allergy i've had so many people say oh yeah i'm lactose intolerant too mm. and so they don't understand what a dramatic difference that is um, and i try to explain that like we can't come anywhere near anything even derived from dairy. So pretty much if it came from a cow, we can't go near it um, or a goat um, because goat's milk is the protein is very similar composition to cow's yeah. milk. And so most of the time people are advised to avoid both. Um, but it's just having those conversations specifically with family. I think that um, people will shy away from, but in the end, I believe that if it's your family, like they want you there, ultimately that's the most important thing to them. And mm -hmm. you just might have to help them walk through that, that how the meal is going to be a little different maybe than it has for the past 40 years, but um, it's okay. <laughs> New is good. Change is good. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and then you find sometimes that those recipes turn out better than they were in the first place. I know we did that with our cranberry relish. We took, you know, sugar mm -hmm. cane out of it and right. we put honey in it. Uh -huh. And it actually has a milder taste to it. It's so right. Mm -hmm. And yep. that recipe is yep. actually coming out tomorrow on our website. So if you're, you're mm -hmm. interested in that a raw cranberry relish with oh, fine. <laughs> so that's, yeah, but it, mm -hmm. my family's like, oh, what, what tastes better about this? <laughs> like, yep. Well, sugar. Yep. It. it was just too harsh. Um, so anyway, right. we went and stayed with my sister several years ago. We drove out to Iowa and stayed with her. And so she accommodated all of the allergies as well to make mm -hmm. the house safe. And after that, she liked the dairy free butter better and continued using it. And um, I have a good friend who ate the allergen-free chocolate chips at my house and thought they tasted better. So now she buys those too and they have no allergies in their house. So um, it's just a matter of being open to something different. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think I'm just very comfortable with that. Luckily, that's just my personality. So when right. my first son was diagnosed with allergy, it really wasn't super daunting to me. For me, it was just, it was, okay, well, this is what it's going to be. And I just need to figure out how to do this. And I um, right. just poured myself into living a different way. So mm -hmm. yeah, and you've created resources in the process for other families. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I always say that food allergy for me is a blessing in our family, which you don't hear many people say. Um, <laughs> but I really, truly believe that the 
it opened my eyes to what I was allowing my children to eat because then I really had to read labels and had to think about where it came from and how it was prepared and what it had touched. And um, that just made me more aware than I already was of what food we were putting in our bodies. And, um, and then just teaching my children to be their own great little advocates. Both yeah. of my kids can speak up for themselves very well and that will serve them in other parts of their lives. So, um, and then the opportunity to help others, it has been amazing. If my kids outgrew their allergies tomorrow, which I know they won't, but if they did, <laughs> um, I would still continue the work that I'm doing because hmm. watching that mother who's sitting in front of me like deteriorating into pieces because she can't imagine what it's gonna be like to raise a child with food allergy, like, it's fantastic to be able to offer encouragement um, and fellowship to our community, so. Yeah, I mm -hmm. agree. And it's just, it's what fuels me is, you know, just watching families affected and um, hearing the encouragement. I, mean, I had a story last week, actually, the couple that was on last week, mm -hmm. they, they shared a story with me that I was speaking at a conference and they were on the fence about homeschooling. And uh -huh. some of the things I said is what pushed them over the edge. Right, and, right. Um, and so now look at what they're doing. And, you know, I just, it, it just warms my heart that I, you know, God can use us and our stories yes. and just wherever you're at and all the things that we go through is not just for us and um, right right so it is encouraging to and and it just it fuels you on like you you said to to do more because um it just encourages you back right right um, and then to allow my children to be a part of that and to see how important it is to give back to our community and um, to use our experiences to help others and um, you know, there are times if I need to be on the computer or I need to be on my phone to answer a text from a, from one of my members with my organization, um, it's completely okay with my children for me to look at them and say, I'm sorry, I know you need a drink right now, but I have a mom at the grocery store that doesn't know what to buy. And they go, oh, okay, answer okay. her first. Yes. Because <laughs> uh, they know what that feels like as uh, uh, in themselves. So um, I love teaching them. Um, to put others before themselves. It's just such a great opportunity for them. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. And my oldest wants to take over the organization one day and he already has grand plans and um, oh, he's going to change the cool. logo, evidently, he tells me. So. <laughs> <laughs> my son just got me doing the broadcast and said, I'm done, mom. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's I'm hilarious. Yeah, um, but cool. to. I think that he's going to be able to continue this work is just fantastic. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. And already thinking of ideas. And yes. Oh, yeah. He's a thinker. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, so one of the topics I wanted to bring up is shipping. Have you ever shipped food to a location? Um, I have not shipped it myself, but Amazon Prime is a beautiful, convenient thing. Yes, and so. <laughs> our cross-country trip um one of our stops in california was at my husband's mom's house and so i had i went on amazon before that um we were probably like halfway across the country so i had a i could judge how much food we were going to need once we got to her house and i had an order already on amazon and had it shipped directly to her house so it was there so we replenished yep yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, when I travel for speaking too, I'll use Amazon Prime just for yep. water. I mean, because right. I don't drink tap water and mm -hmm. um, this messes with my gut really bad. Um, yep. And so, but you can actually call the hotel and mm -hmm. ask them, you know, which, where do I send the person to? And you can put specific instructions, you know, if it's mm -hmm. the delivery dock in the back or whatever. And then I love with Prime, you can see the delivery date. Yes. So mm -hmm. I'll just kind of watch and make sure it shows up on the exact day that I'm arriving. Right. It's, right. it's wonderfully. Yes. Um, yes. So, so yeah, definitely. But, yeah. but yeah, having the option for family, I've had friends who I've sent. Um, I have a wholesale account with Frontier. Um, uh -huh. and, and so I, I love getting stuff from, from them because I can ship it for free if I get over a certain amount. And if I'm mm -hmm. traveling with my daughter, you know, we, we definitely use a lot of different products and, um, right. so, so I'll even order my shampoos for traveling and things like right. that. And yeah, yeah, that's smart. 
Um, I'm going to be traveling to Mexico in February because one of my best friends is getting married there. It's going to be the first time that I have actually traveled out of the country other than taking cruises. And so, and definitely the first time that I've traveled out of the country having a food allergy myself. So I'm already starting to think about, I will end up shipping food using Amazon, if it's an option, which I need to figure out, um, to the hotel in order to have at least snacks there. I can survive on snacks for a few days. Um, and so, yes, that's next on my, on my agenda is to start figuring that out. So that'll be new for me, but. So what about, um, have you ever used like DoorDash or um, not DoorDash, but I know there's grocery shopping. Um, I have like Instacart or yeah. uh -huh. I have not used those. I have used the Walmart pickup because I can use the app on my phone and change the location. And then I can do my order and then set to when I'm going to drive up and pick it up in a totally different state um, that I have used before. And that's handy. Um, Target also offers something similar. So I've not used Target, but that would be an option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, definitely there's a co-op in Illinois that's near where we go to visit family and they carry mm -hmm. some products that we don't get here. So I call in advance and they order like a case or two for me oh, of a product. And then I go and I pick it up while we're there visiting and then bring it home. And it's like my stash to last uh -huh. me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so traveling can actually help you find food instead of just <laughs> yep. search for yep. it. Um, Where there is a will, there is a way with me. <laughs> That's funny. So yep. uh, our time is coming to a close. We have 10 more minutes, but I wanted to share some of your pictures. So okay. what should I bring up first? Um, if you want to do the one of my little one and I, where I'm wearing a beanie. I know so I should. On the boat? Yes. Okay. Yes, that was in San Francisco. We're actually going to Alcatraz. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, that's Henry. He's almost, he'll be five next month. Um, he's a very adventurous little one. Mm. Um, it was the first time he'd ever been on a boat before and it was freezing cold uh -huh. because it was dark in the Bay Area, but um, he loved the boat and we had a great adventure that day. Um, so that was probably eight, maybe nine days into our cross country trip that day. Mm -hmm. well, you all look happy and, and healthy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what about the shark one? What's the story behind that? The shark one, so that's in California as well. I just thought that showed the personality of the boys perfectly. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> <laughs> that's at an aquarium up in Crescent City, which is in Northern California, almost to the Oregon border. Um, we stayed at a beautiful resort there where you would like walk out and you were literally right on the beach. Um, and then that was an aquarium close by that that we did. Um, and li our little one, Henry, um, we're not sure about fish, but we do know he's allergic to shellfish. And so places like aquariums, you're just careful with what you touch, like touch ponds, we don't always do. Bad, because you always think about eating, but your exposure even, yeah. Right, right. Um, so if, displays now where the kids can like touch all that stuff. <laughs> right, um, like stingrays, we have stingrays at a local museum here in North Carolina and he's been okay with that. I did ask them ahead of time what they ate. They ate mainly shrimp and and he has never reacted to shrimp. And so I allowed him, like we just did a quick little test, like put his hand in the water, took it out, watched it for five or 10 minutes to make sure he wasn't reacting at all. Um, and then I did let him put his hand in there. Um, but yes, things like that, like what did the stingray eat? <laughs> like that's important information for me to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I never even thought about, yeah, places you would visit and what you're exposed to eat. <laughs> right, right, right. Definitely, yeah. Right. And then we've got this picture of you guys on a rock. Yeah, so that's a fantastic, we call it the Dragon Park. Um, it's a fantastic park in Illinois. Um, we were just back there in October. And um, it was actually done in memorial of a young man who passed away. And then his he was very into Dungeons and Dragons. And so they created this whole park and it's free to play on. So we love to go there. We always go. Um, hmm. And we were climbing all over the rocks that day or all over the sculpture that day. I mean, you can just climb all over that guy. Um, but, and I love that picture because it's just like, it's us just out living life. Like in a moment like that, 
we don't feel any different than anybody else. Um, yeah. And even when we eat food, like we're still eating food, it's just food. <laughs> um, it just doesn't contain a lot of the same things that other people eat. So right. when people are shocked that we go where we go, I mean, we go to the mm -hmm. library, we go to the children's museum, um, we, we drive across country and back, you know, like crazy people in the middle of the winter and snow and floods and um, <laughs> but we did it and we did it safely. Nobody had a reaction. Mm -hmm. um, but awesome. I, I, people always wonder how we even leave our house. You know, we do go to the movie theater, but we cover the seat with a sheet and, and we clearly oh, yeah. don't eat any food there um, mm -hmm. because our, our kids are contact sensitive. And so I can't wipe down the fabric on a seat, but I can certainly cover it. So I just use really thick flannel fitted sheets and I just cover it and then we're good. And their surface is clean and they eat snacks that um, I bring in because medically that's okay under ADA. Um, and that's where knowing your child's civil rights is really important. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, people think that we live in a bubble and we never leave our house, but with some planning and calling right. ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, this is good. I, I love that, that, you know, you, you, you have exposed your kids to so much and, um, mm -hmm. and, and just shown them that the life you can live life. Yes. Um, this is such good lessons for them and their future. Um, instead of living in fear, we, we too often, when we have a child that has difficulties, we, we have so much fear and, um, mm -hmm. Just embrace, yes, we have things, but we're going to be proactive and we're going to plan and we're going to take things as they come when we need to. Right. Uh, and that's right. A, the, the overarching message I'm hearing from you, you know, in this hour as we've been talking. And, and it's, um, I mm -hmm. hope it's been, you know, really encouraging to people that um, have listened in and mm -hmm. uh, just that don't. Don't let it limit you. I mean, yes, no. it's going to limit your diet, but it doesn't have to limit the rest of your life. Right, right. And I think it's important to reach out to other people who live this lifestyle because each of us do different things well. And so one person might do a really great job at adapting recipes and the other person might do a really great job of navigating the school system. Um, and so it's just reaching out to other people who live similar lives to you and saying, here's a stopping block for me. How have you handled that? Um, and then you have an opportunity to learn. And then I think it's just as fantastic to provide that other person that opportunity to share. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's just our, that feeds a part of our soul. <laughs> um, that's really important. Um, and my oldest also has autism. And so that results in us living a very different lifestyle as well. And um, fortunately, his, his saying that he's coined, and I even put it on a shirt for him, is it's lame to be the same. And that's just kind of the way we live. Like, why do we want to be the same as everybody else when we can come up with a creative solution and do it differently? So, right. Um, yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. My oldest would agree. Yeah. That's great. I'm at five. And so, yes. So he's mm -hmm. like, why do you want to be like everyone else? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Um, and it's a great lesson for us as adults who can sometimes get a little tied up in, you know, what are others going to think of my choice or this isn't the way everybody else does it. And um, I gave myself permission a very long time ago to live my life differently. Um, and that's what I pass on to my kids is it's okay to be different. Yeah. Embrace being different. So mm -hmm. true. So I'm going to bring up your website again for those people that may not have joined us at the beginning, but um, food allergy families of the triad.org is um, where you can find Angela and yep. um, her resources. Um, and, and, you know, yes, you, you're in a certain section of the country, but your, your website is accessible around the world. Absolutely. <laughs> and so, yes. I have some really good resources on there for um, yep. helping. And, and even just um, some of the things we talked about and a whole lot of things we didn't even have time to, to chat about. So, mm -hmm. so definitely check out her resources. And um, and I just want to thank you, Angela. Yeah, this thank you. Really a very good um, conversation. I, um, I definitely hadn't thought of all those things and I'm sure our, our viewers haven't either. And, um, right. and just that, you know, just making it so doable. 
Um, mm -hmm. I think that that's one of the things that stood out to me as we've been chatting is like, yeah, that's, that's possible. You know, I can listen yep. to you, you can do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And you've proven it. You can do that. Yeah, um, right. right. <laughs> yeah. You could ask so. my parents. I've been strong willed since the beginning. So you tell me <laughs> I can't do something. I will certainly figure out a way. <laughs> yeah. My husband calls me a bulldog. Yeah, um, that's awesome. a bull. But um, yeah, <laughs> don't let go. Um, and you kind of need that sometimes when you're you're asked to to kind of stand up front and set a trend and say this right. this is doable for for right. everyone else. I right. I promise you can do this. <laughs> so, right. Yes. And if people have any other questions or need help with anything, they can reach out with the resources on the website. Mm -hmm. There's an email address and then my phone number is on there as well. Um, and so people can reach out to me directly. And if they need a resource in their area, I can connect. I'm affiliated with all of the national nonprofits. And so I can reach out to the national food allergy nonprofits to find them resources locally if they need local resources um, or just guide them to different websites. There's tons of information online. So yeah but unfortunately there's tons of information online but it's not all good yes. and so going through kind of a clearinghouse like angela's you know right. mm -hmm. website that's why we put our website together because it's right. like we well, don't need to be spending hours we'll we'll take that right. off of you and yeah. so um that's what sped homeschool is about too is we just want to mm -hmm. get you the resources that you need that are reliable and good so you aren't spending all this time on the internet reading things that you shouldn't be and they're making you feel guilty and that you're not spending enough money <laughs> oh anyways <laughs> so um we also want to thank a reason for um for sponsoring this broadcast, you can definitely visit their website at areasoncore.com. Um, they have lots of downloads and samples, and we um, we're highlighting one of their handwriting their handwriting program this week. And so, we definitely want you to check that out as well. So, um, and we want to thank our viewers. Thank you for joining us. We didn't have a whole lot of comments, but we hope that we answered your questions. And if you're watching us on recorded session. Um, definitely, if you have a comment or question and you're watching us on YouTube, or maybe this is you're watching mm -hmm. after on Facebook, put something in the feed. Um, we'll make sure that your questions get answered or get funneled to the, you know, to Angela or um, yeah. um, we'll, we'll just make sure that they get answered. So mm -hmm. um, that's what, what we're here for. Um, so we just want to continue this conversation though. Um, I know in our support group, we've been talking a lot about food. So if you want to join our Facebook support group as well, um, we talk about homeschooling stuff and a whole lot more, just general living and homeschooling and special needs children and all of that. So mm -hmm. um, definitely um, ask to join that group and we'd be happy to have you in our community there as well. And so next week is our last broadcast for the year. And we're going to continue this food theme, but we're going to talk about food allergy diet burnout <laughs> and kids, but mostly teens. And what do you do with them at the holidays? Because <laughs> when they're teens, they kind of get a whole idea of their own of what's important and what's not. Um, I know I have two adult children <laughs> and we're teen. So, um, so that's our topic next week. And hopefully our, um, I, well, I'm pretty sure definitely sure that um, our guest Jennifer will be able to to guide you to some really good resources because she's been there too. Um, <laughs> so um, until then, everybody, thanks for joining us again. Thanks, Angela. We appreciate Thank the you. conversation and um, we'll see you all again next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>